Good morning. Tonight we're going to make pizza. So in order to do that, we need to make dough this morning. In order to make pizza, you need a couple of simple things. You want a pizza steel instead of a stone. You want a thin pizza peel. Makes it get the pizza in and out of the oven a lot easier. And you need a digital scale. They're like 20 bucks off Amazon. You want to weigh all your ingredients out because that way your dough will turn out perfect every time. You can't use a measuring cup for flour because sometimes the cup is packed, sometimes it's loose. You're not going to have the same amount. So in our tub right now, we have 325 grams of warm water. I have 15 grams of fine sea salt and an eighth teaspoon of instant yeast. Once everything's dissolved, we're going to add 500 grams of double zero flour. I get this off a of Penn Macaroni Company down in Pittsburgh, order about 30 pounds at a time. It gives me plenty of flour for a few months for breads, pasta, pizza, and whatever else. So once we add the flour, all we're going to do is give it a quick mix. You don't need to knead it. All we're going to do is combine it, and it's going to be just a massive goo in here. Just mix everything around. Make sure you get all the flour into just a rough ball. Like I said, we're going to knead this out here pretty soon, so this doesn't have to be pretty, and it's not going to be. it right there. Get as much of the dough off your fingers as you can. Again, it doesn't have to be exact. And this is it. You can see this is a rough pile of dough in there. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to let this sit for about 20 minutes and then when we come back we'll knead it into a larger ball which will sit for two hours. So that's why we start the dough in the morning because it takes about eight and a half hours for it to do its thing. So, we'll be back. Okay, our dough sat for about 20 minutes. So the next step is we're gonna take it out of the tub, put it on a little flour surface. No worry, I'm gonna move that. Put a little bit of olive oil into our pan, or tub, whatever you wanna call it. All we're gonna do is knead this for about 30 seconds to a minute into one big dough ball. It should be nice and smooth after you're done. And that's all there is to it. Now you're thinking, you said it's going to take eight hours to make dough? Well, most that's setting time. It's going to sit for two hours after I'm done doing this. And then after that two hour period, we'll take it out and divide it into three equal dough balls. Or slabs of dough, then form them into dough balls. Now you can make between three and five pizzas out of this dough. All depends on how big you want to do it. And you're thinking, that seems like a lot of work. Well, not really. In fact, I'm making two batches of dough for tonight. I'll be making six thin pizzas, and then I'm also making a Sicilian pizza, which is even easier to make than a Neapolitan. So this is about it. You look at it, you fold this up, just like you're making small dough balls. And there it is, big dough ball. I'm gonna say just stick it in there for two hours, Leave it sit, and then when we come back, we'll make the snower dough, smaller dough balls. Ah, <laughs> snower, it's winter time, I hate the cold. So, that's it, like I said, two hours, and we'll be back, so I'll see you soon. Welcome back, are you still with us? I hope so, it's only been like a couple minutes. So, it's been two hours, and the dough is done. So I've already weighed it and divided it out into three equal dough balls, or about 280 grams each. Like I said, I'm making several batches of dough, so I'm making six pizzas tonight. So all I gotta do now is make our dough balls, which is a simple process of just grabbing the dough underneath and pulling it forward, over top. Turn our quarter turn every time. And as you can see, this takes literally like 10 seconds or so. There it is, perfect ball. So what you do is you're gonna take a cookie sheet, coat it with flour, and after you do each ball, you put it on there. Then we will top each dough ball with some flour. That way the cling wrap won't stick to it whenever we tighten, tightly cover it with said cling wrap. You'll be able to tell when you're doing this. You can feel the dough start to get stiff in your hand a little bit. You can tell it's gonna be nice and smooth on top. That's really all there is to it. The recipe, of course, is written out 
with pictures on our website, exploreitalyandbeyond.com. If you're a subscriber, please subscribe to our site. We'll be doing more videos. I already have some up there, actually. I'm redoing these ones now. We also have our trips to Italy, also other places like Norway and Sweden. It's just that easy. So I'm going to finish this up, cover this tightly with cling wrap, and then it will sit for six hours or until you're ready to start cooking. If it's later than that, that's fine. It doesn't matter. And then you're ready to go. So when we come back, I'll show you how to hand stretch the dough, and that's the final process. All right, see you soon. It's been six hours. Our dough balls are ready to go. So you have two options. I cook mine at 500 degrees for about seven to eight minutes on parchment paper. That way you don't have to use cornmeal, semolina, flour, or whatever agent you want to use for sliding on and off the pizza peels. You have to use a wooden peel if you use an agent like that because it sticks a lot less to wood than it does to metal. Uh, I just find it a lot easier to use parchment paper. It's not that big of a deal. You can also cook on convection bake. Convection bake will take a lot shorter, probably about three to four minutes. It's probably about half the time. So when you're doing your dough, do not use a rolling pin because all you're going to do is kill all the air bubbles that this dough formed over the last six hours. All you got to do is go around the outside and stretch it. You can see it's already starting to come down. You just want to make sure you don't take it too thin or it'll start the window pane on you. If you want to throw it up in the air and get fancy, feel free. At the end of the video, I will have just a little slideshow of the finished product you can look at. There's also pictures on the website. And this is basically all there is to it. You can stretch this out as much as you want. It should make at least a 12 inch pizza. It might be stretching a little bit to try to get a 16. And it might be a little thin if you do that, but that's up to you. If you want a little thicker, yeah, just make a 10 or an 8 inch. That's up to you. Well, that's it. What you got to do now, put your sauce on it, throw it in the oven, and you're ready to eat. So, thank you for watching. Enjoy.